1968, and three young, scared housemates recount the story of a haunting that they've been experiencing. This haunting is known as the Annabelle case, one in which a toy doll is being possessed by an evil spirit named Annabelle. She was a young girl who supposedly died in the house and now lives within the body of the doll. The housemates tell their story to two demonologists, Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens tell them that there is no Annabelle and that the spirit is an evil demon using the doll as a conduit to give the impression of a haunting and its ultimate goal to possess the housemates themselves. The recounting is revealed to be showing on a projector screen to a theater full of university students. The Warrens are teaching the class, using it to explain that in order to solve the Annabelle case, they had to contact the church and have them send a priest over to bless the house and the doll both. A title crawl explains that the Warrens have been world-renowned demonologists since the early 1960s, having worked thousands of cases, where Ed is the only non-ordained demonologist recognized by the church, and Lorraine is a gifted clairvoyant. It's three years later, 1971, and the Perrin family arrives at their new home in Rhode Island. An out-of-work truck driver, Roger Perrin was forced to move his wife, Carolyn, and their five daughters to a new home in state in an attempt to start a new life. None of their daughters appear to be happy about this move, especially the eldest, Andrea. That night, the daughters are playing a game of hide and clap. It's a game similar to hide and seek, but the one seeking has to cover their eyes, while those hiding clap their hands to try and lure the seeker to where they're hiding. The middle daughter, Christine, is the one seeking, and soon she stumbles on a secret entrance to a hidden cellar beneath the house. The light to the cellar doesn't work, so Roger uses a single match to light his way. It's dark down in the cellar and crammed with piles of old garbage. The girls wait at the top of the stairs, fear growing when Roger doesn't return, until he suddenly does. He comes back upstairs and tells the girls not to go down there until he's had a better look. That night, their dog Sadie barks at nothing. Roger and Carolyn try and calm him down, unable to see what's agitating the dog so much. The next morning, Carolyn wakes up to find a random bruise on her leg. Her daughters then complain about how cold the house is and how the bedroom smells of old meat for some reason. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. Carolyn explores the house as Roger endeavors to fix the heating, again noting how darn cold it is. As Carolyn makes coffee, she sees that all the clocks in the house have stopped on the same time. 3.07. There's something odd about it all. Before she can investigate any further, the youngest daughter, Cindy, screams from outside the house. Carolyn and Roger hurry to see what's wrong, only to come across the corpse of their dead dog, Sadie. In Connecticut, Ed Warren shows a reporter the storage space in their house where they keep all the demonic possessions they have confiscated over the years. The reporter's interested in the Annabelle doll, which Ed shows him. He explains that the doll is safe, that it's just the conduit that the demon latches onto. The reporter then hints at a past event in which Lorraine was nearly possessed by a demon, but Ed dismisses him, telling him that was an exorcism, and that was different. Dangerous, but different. Once the reporter leaves, Ed and Lorraine speak for a moment. They discuss this past event, suggesting that it still haunts them even to this very day. Ed seems to blame himself for whatever it was that happened. Christine is sleeping in a room she shares with her sister, Nancy. Something pulls on her leg, waking her up. She blames Nancy, who tells her she didn't do anything. They then comment on the smell, assuming one of them had to have caused it, but both deny it was them. Roger's working alone when he hears a banging noise coming from within the house. It's just a loose door, which he closes. Before he can go back to work, Andrea wakes up and tells him that Cindy is sleepwalking again. Roger finds her standing by a wardrobe, banging her head into it. Andrea says that she's never seen her do this before, but they guide her back to bed nonetheless. Carolyn is covered in even more bruises, but she has no idea where they're coming from. She plays hide and clap with Cindy, taking the role of seeker. She follows the sound of clapping through the house and toward an open wardrobe. It gets stronger and stronger and we see a pair of hands clapping from within. Thinking that she's found her, Carolyn grabs at the wardrobe, but it's empty. That night, Christine is again woken by a force pulling on her foot. She goes to blame Nancy, who's fast asleep, nervous. She checks under the bed, but there's nothing. 
She then looks across the room, where she sees someone standing behind the open door. She wakes Nancy, who can't see anything, but then the door slams, and they both scream. Roger and Carolyn rush in and try to comfort Christine, but she's convinced someone's in the house. The Warrens are at another house, one claimed to be haunted. They explain patiently that the house isn't haunted, that the age of the house has caused it to creak and make noises. More often than not, there's a reasonable explanation behind so-called hauntings. Carolyn folds clothes alone at night. She hears noises coming from within the house, so she investigates. First, it's a crashing noise, which was caused by the family photos being mysteriously pulled down from the wall and smashed. Then it's the doors creaking all over the house. She soon finds herself heading for the cellar, and when she opens the door to have a look, it slams closed behind her and sends her tumbling down the stairs. It's pitch black in the cellar. She hurriedly lights a candle, and a pair of hands suddenly clap right over her shoulder. The candle goes out, the room descends into darkness, and she screams. Upstairs, Andrea is woken by Cindy sleepwalking in her room. She puts her to bed, only to turn back and see a demon-like woman on her dresser watching her. She pounces at Andrea and attacks her. Roger suddenly returns home. He finds his wife running from the basement screaming. His daughter's upstairs also screaming in fear. It's pandemonium. The entire family's a mess and Roger doesn't know what to believe. The Warrens are teaching a class. They show a video of an exorcism that they were part of several years earlier. Ed explains the danger in doing an exorcism for both the victim and anyone watching. Ed continues by explaining the three stages of demonic activity, infestation, oppression, and then possession. We see Carolyn sitting in the back of the classroom, listening with dread on her face. After class, Carolyn approaches Ed and Lorraine. She explains her situation and begs for the Warrens to come and take a look. They seem hesitant, but she begs further, citing her will to protect her daughters. Carolyn seems moved by this plight. The Warrens walk through the house as the parents explain everything that's happened. It's always cold, despite the heat being turned up. There's an awful smell, like rotting meat. The doors bang all night, coming in threes and stopping at dawn. Birds fly into the house constantly. The clocks all stopped at 3.07 a.m. Pictures are knocked down from the walls. The Warrens go down to the cellar, where Lorraine can sense that something awful has happened. Ed uses a recorder to interview Carolyn and Roger. She tells him everything. Lorraine investigates further. First, Cindy shows her a music box, which, when opened and played, shows a reflection of a young boy standing in the window. Cindy claims that he's her friend and that he's just scared. Next, Lorraine goes outside, where a large tree grows in the backyard by a small dock. Ed joins her as she looks up at the tree. She becomes terrified by what she sees. Ed can't see it, but we see a pair of feet dangling by his shoulder. Back in the house, Lorraine and Ed explain that the house needs an exorcism. Lorraine goes on to explain that a dark entity born in the house has now latched itself onto the parent family. It's feeding off of them, and no matter where they go, it will follow. There are apparently several spirits in the house, but this one in particular is so filled with hate that Lorraine knows they have to expel it. Ed then explains that in order to do a proper exorcism, they have to apply for the church to send a priest. But because it's so dangerous and such an ancient procedure, first they need to gather proof that the house is haunted. So that's what they'll do. That night, Ed is showing his wife the recording he did with Carolyn earlier. For reasons he doesn't understand, her voice didn't record. Lorraine then shows Ed the history of the house, a most dark history. The original owner of the home was the sister of a witch accused during the Salem witch trials. Apparently, she was caught trying to sacrifice her baby seven days after its birth. Then she proclaimed herself to Satan, cursed anyone trying to take her land, and hung herself from the tree at exactly 3.07 a.m. And it gets worse from there. Lorraine shows Ed previous tenants from the 1930s, a mother and a son. The son went missing within a week while the mother killed herself in the cellar just after. She then shows a map of the area, detailing how the land used to be far more encompassing and scores of people who have lived on that land at one point or another have all died a gruesome death. Suddenly, the recording starts to play, but not what was recorded. Instead, it's a demonic screech, mixed with the wails of children and women, as if a warning. 
The Warrens don't know what to make of it. The next day, the Warrens arrive back at the house with a team of investigators. They set cameras up around the house with high-powered lights designed to capture the image of the spirits and ghosts. They also have blue lights to show the ectoplasm of any spirits and bells attached to doorways to track movement. By the time the night falls, they're ready. Ed starts to try and activate the spirits by spreading holy water and crosses throughout the house. Bells start dinging, leading Ed and Lorraine down into the cellar. Using their recording equipment, they try and speak with the spirits, doing what they can to get them to stir and prove their existence. But there's nothing. The Warrens spend the next day at the house, bonding with the family and reminding them of why they do this. Ed and Roger talk, and Ed explains the toll this takes on Lorraine. He tells a story about a case a while ago in which Lorraine saw something that affected her worse than anything she's seen before. Ed still doesn't know what it was she saw, but it clearly worries him deeply. That night, one of the investigators is attacked by a ghost. It's only for a second, but it sets the house alive. Cindy's sleepwalking again, but when the cameras start flashing, they realize that it's caused by the spirits attached to Cindy. She wanders into the bedroom, and the door closes behind her. Locked, they bash the door down and run into the room, only for Cindy to be gone. The UV lights reveal her footprints through the room and leading to a crawled space in the wall. Lorraine goes in after her, but the floor gives out and she drops into the cellar. Ed runs down after her, and Lorraine's fine. She finds the music box, and it turns on which sets the spirits off again. She sees a large demon woman holding a knife behind her, sobbing. Then another appears, claiming that she made me do it. Next, there's a body, dangling from the rafters. She runs upstairs, shouting that she knows what's going on. The demon, she explains, is possessing the homeowners to kill their children. The bruises on Carolyn are caused by the demon who's feeding off of her. It's now that the house explodes with mayhem. Nancy gets picked up by her hair and thrown across the house. The family try and hold her down, but an unseen spirit is dragging her by the hair. Lorraine grabs a pair of scissors and cuts Nancy free, but it's too late. Everyone's terrified beyond belief. The only bright spot in all of this is that the Warrens got it all on camera. They send the footage to the church, hoping for a quick response although Ed specifies that Lorraine won't be returning. The previous night was too much for her. Meanwhile, the parents pack up their car to go somewhere safe, with Ed telling them that they can return when the house is clear. Lorraine is at the back of the house by the tree when she sees her daughter's body floating in the water. In a panic, she rushes to call her house, learning that her daughter is fine. But Lorraine knows that it was a warning to something much more dire. Ed and Lorraine are showing the footage to the church. The father seems hesitant, as the parent family isn't baptized, but Ed explains how urgent it is, and the father relents and agrees to send for help. Judy, Ed, and Lorraine's young daughter is sleeping at a home when she wakes suddenly. Hearing a noise, she follows it to a room where her parents keep their exercised possessions. Noticeably, the Annabelle doll is gone. Judy moves through the house, where she spots an old lady sitting on a rocking chair brushing Annabelle's hair. Annabelle turns her head to look at Judy, and Judy calls for help. Ed and Lorraine rush to help her, and Ed hurries to see that Annabelle is still locked up as if Ed never left. Roger returns to the hotel where his family's staying to find that his wife has left. She took Christine and April without saying a word, forcing them into the car and driving. The two daughters appear terrified in the car, while Carolyn says nothing. Roger calls Ed and Lorraine, who realize that Carolyn has been possessed and is taking her daughters back to the house to kill them. The Warrens rush to the house to find Carolyn already there. She's in the cellar with her two daughters, trying her best to kill Christine with a pair of scissors. They manage to free the children and hurry them to the car. But when they try and take Carolyn with them, the demon drags her back into the cellar, kicking and screaming as she goes. The Warrens hold her down, but the demon inside Carolyn fights back. She kicks and bites, but they manage to strap her to a rocking chair. They want to wait for the priest, but there's no time. She won't make it. Ed knows that he has no choice but to perform the exorcism himself. He tries to make Lorraine leave, but she refuses. They're in this together to the end. Ed performs the exorcism, and the entire house erupts. Carolyn screams and cries out as if in pain. Crows flock to the house. The walls seem to shake. 
All the while, Ed chants in Latin, reciting the text needed to expel the demon once and for all. Blood seeps out of Carolyn, as if she begs her husband to make it stop. But Ed keeps going. Then, everything goes silent. Is it over? They look about, hopeful. Then the chair starts to rise into the air. Ed continues to chant. The demon does everything it can to make him stop, and it manages to break free of its bonds. Still possessing Carolyn, it grabs April and drags her into the walls, intent on killing her once and for all. And she's about to, until Lorraine touches her head, forces Carolyn to fight the demon, and remember her love for her family. A blinding flash of light, and we see a memory of the family at the beach, happy and in love, enjoying the day. And that's enough to expel the demon from Carolyn once and for all. The next morning, everything looks to be back to normal. The parents huddle together crying their joy as the Warrens stand back and watch, proud of what they'd done. Back in the Warrens' house, the room with the possessed antiques, we see the music box turn itself on, slowly start to spin as we look about the room, suggesting a possible haunting within. This was a recap of the film The Conjuring, produced by Warner Brothers and released in 2013. It was directed by James Wan and stars Vera Farminga, Patrick Wilson, Ron Livingston, and Lily Taylor. Have you ever seen a ghost? Tell us when with the hashtag cinema recap in the comments.